Hey, we are here at Great Lakes Distillery. I'm Clint with Poyer Poison. This is Michael Cothro. He is the tasting room manager here at Great Lakes Distillery. He's in charge of many, many things, but he is also the, uh, the master at spirits. So we're sitting down today and we're talking about absinthe. Some may know a lot about it, some may know nothing. Um, but we have a lot of questions for him today, so we're gonna start asking. Um, the basic question, of course, that we all wanna know is, well, what is absinthe? All right, absinthe is uh, real simple. It's just a flavored spirit. It has to be flavored with three ingredients. The three ingredients, the first two, are aniseed and fennel seed, which is why most people think of it as tasting like black licorice. Now, the third ingredient, this right here, this is grand wormwood. Its real name, though, is Artemisia absinthium, and that is where the name absinthe is, comes from. Uh, this ingredient being incorporated into food or beverage was infamously banned in the United States in 1912, which is where we got the clever name Amérique 1912. Uh, it was banned in Switzerland in 1910, in France in 1915, and these bans lasted about uh, 90 years or so. Uh, a chemist uh, from New Orleans decided to do a little bit of experimenting and discovered that absinthe does not contain any hallucinogenic or mind-altering experiences other than the fact that it's made from alcohol, or made with alcohol. Uh, but the wormwood, this right here, and you can go ahead and eat this all you want, you're not gonna trip. So there is nothing that is all Hollywood myth. Uh, now, it is fairly bitter uh, to eat, but if you properly distill the wormwood with the aniseed and fennel seed, you get a very delicious product that most importantly does not require sugar if it's made right. That is, it's really sharp bitter. It's really sharp bitter. Wow. Yeah, good thing I have something to wash. Yeah. Down. Wash that taste Perfect. away. So, uh, now, no. no, 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 go ahead, keep going. I just, I'm full of questions. Oh yeah, ask a question. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, what, I see you have two absinthe here. Yeah, well once you have your three essential ingredients in it, you can put in whatever else you want. And we distill with the aniseed, the fennel seed, and the wormwood, and then we infuse more herbs after distillation. So in the traditional French style, and we are using a French recipe that is uh, well over 100 years old, it goes back to the 1860s. Uh, there are manuals and stuff from distillers that we can prove that this is traditional absinthe. And we use things like hyssop and lemon balm to infuse after the distillation process and it turns our absinthe a green color. A lot of brands out on the market are using yellow dyes to make their absinthe turn green, but this is all natural color. Beautiful. Which is also why we keep it packaged in a tube. Uh, you'll notice that more legitimate absinthe will have some sort of uh, opaque covering over the outside of their bottle, and that's to protect them from the light, because they do fade. Now, does that alter the flavor when they fade? Not really. Okay. Not significantly. Okay. Uh, now. We do make a rouge, which is also something that was being made back in uh, the heyday of absinthe. And instead of using the hyssop and lemon balm like the traditional French style, some people consider this a Spanish variation, we use hibiscus flowers. Beautiful. Now, you can kind of see it on our labels, which I drew. A little plug for myself. The uh, artist of these leaves. We have the wormwood leaves. We have uh, some star anise, but we do actually use aniseed and star anise, which are different uh, plants but have similar flavor. And a little uh, fennel blossom there. And on this one, you can see a hyssop blossom. Absolutely. And on this one, you get the uh, hibiscus in the middle. Both taste great, by the way. Beautiful. Now, is one more subtle than the other? I'm guessing you get a little more floral. Yeah. Well, the, the hyssop that is used to flavor the green has an anise flavor to itself okay. as well. And that makes the vert style much more anise flavor. Perfect. All right, now what are you doing here? Well, I'm going to louche the absinthe. Louche. Louche. Explain that to me. That's a French word, and my understanding is that it roughly means uh, to make foggy. Uh, the important thing to know about anything that's distilled from aniseed is that you extract an oil called anethyl. And anethol is not soluble with water, but it is with alcohol. So this looks clear right here. And once I start adding ice water to it, you're going to notice just how oily it really is. And we have a nice little fancy fountain right here, but oh, yeah. I do not prefer it. I actually I prefer this thing right here, the brouillet. So this is a fountain? 
Yep. Same thing for absinthe. You put the ice water in top. You know, basically back in the day when absinthe was popular, and this is a very common thing in Europe, you share tables with strangers all the time. And if you went into a cafe or a bar that had absinthe as one of their main things, they would have a fountain on the table and they would just have it filled with chilled water. And you would just sit down, the, you would get your shot of absinthe, and then you would add your own ice water to water wow. it down. And you do want to water it down. Uh, it's very popular right now to do shots of absinthe in a lot of bars uh, because it gets you drunk really fast. And it's so high in alcohol, it's like a dare. Uh, but that's really stupid. Other stupid things are lighting it on fire. <laughs> uh, lighting absinthe on fire is only going to destroy the alcohol. And what's the point of buying something that's destroyed? Kill the flavor, yeah. Absolutely. Now, you can kind of see already how oily it is. Yeah, it's starting to cloud up on the bottom. Yeah, which is why I really like to use the brouillet because it, uh, it lends a lot more to Absolutely. You see that? It's, and you get the layer where the water hasn't hit. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. It's gorgeous. So what's happening here, and it's very essential that your water be cold, this does not occur with warm water, is an emulsion. Because the uh, essential oils of the anethol, or from the aniseed, are precipitating out of the alcohol and in, into this emulsion. But the problem with emulsions is that they're not stable. So we can't bottle absinthe at the proper drinking strength because it'll eventually break. And once it breaks, it'll never create an emulsion ever again. Which is why you keep it out of the high proof, which ours is 126. Wow. So it's all cloudy now, straight through. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you doing there? Oh, I'm just taking that off. These, this is a, a Pontelier glass, which is really handy because you just fill up the reservoir and it's already got a measuring spot for you and then you add ice water to it. But the thing about absinthe is I actually think of it as more like uh, wine. And that's really where the history of absinthe, uh, and we could go into great length about this, is directly tied to the wine industry back in the day there was an invasive species called phylexera that comes over from North America and wipes out vineyards across Europe. And the price of wine goes through the roof, and this market is flooded with spirits and liqueurs. And during this time, this is when we think of all the posters you always see in cafes and bars of Campari and Fernet sure. Branca and stuff like that. Well, it was a time of great prosperity, and they were basically trying to, everybody was falling all over each other to, to uh, get the market because wine wasn't available. Absinthe becomes the top dog. Perfect. And then, at the same time, you had syphilis, you had opiates, these widespread problems. How'd you of... know? <laughs> I was there. <laughs> uh, and you know, these widespread problems of, uh, of, of brain damage, drug addiction, alcoholism, and absinthe starts to get a bad reputation. And it becomes this thing where the rich people drink wine, the poor people drink absinthe. And eventually, the wine industry recovers from this blight and they want their consumer base back, so they launch a smear campaign. And they, they pay criminals to testify that they committed crimes because they drank absinthe. They pay scientists uh, who inject thujone at 10 times the normal dosage into rats to cause the rats to die. Thujone is a chemical compound that's in wormwood, and there's different amounts of thujone that are allowed by the, Euro by the US and different amounts allowed by the European Union. It is not significant. Sage has more thujone in it than wormwood does. Thujone is also found in things like oregano and mint and juniper and cedar and all sorts of other things. There is no evidence that it causes any mind-altering experiences at all. Interesting. Now, Very interesting. Uh, but they, they use thujone as the, um, the basis for getting absinthe banned, and they succeed. But mostly it comes down to just competition in the marketplace. Very interesting. So now that absinthe is back and legal once again, um, has the recipe been altered since uh, it's been back? Well, we followed a, uh, a recipe that I mean, you can find available. Go to wormwoodsociety.org. Uh, and also, if you want to know about thujone, you can go to thujone.info. Really good websites that have a lot of information about absinthe. We've been tweaking our recipe to our flavor. Perfect. So, as well as you should. And we're really happy with how this has turned out. I can't wait to try it. So keep going with the drink. Oh, yeah, what are, yeah, yeah. What are drink so up. this is ready to go? Yeah, that's ready to go. Ice it's water and absinthe. Three parts water to one part absinthe. You're bringing it down to the drinking strength of wine. It's really the best way to enjoy it. So of course it's really good in the cup. So it's easy as that. It's easy as that. Very herbal. Mm -hmm. You get a little anise on the nose. I mean, it's, it's fantastic smelling. 
Here we go. Give it a whirl. Celia? The water really breaks it, really opens up the flavor. Uh, you actually get more because it's not overpowering. And it's fantastic. It's really silky, smooth, and it's got you know, like that you know, silky <coughs> texture on your palate. It's, it's got a very distinctive texture on the palate. It's actually very oily. Yes, it's very oily. Which is fantastic. It tastes great. And it's amazing. You should definitely try out this product. Um, check them both out if you're into Absent. Great Lakes Distillery, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you have not been here, definitely check it out. They give tours all the time. More than likely, you'll bump into Michael himself. Ask him questions. He's got answers for everything. He is uh, the booze god here at Great Lakes. We're going to call you the booze god. The booze god? Booze I'll, god. I'll take that. But um, thanks. I yeah. appreciate the, uh, the tutorial and, and the info on Absinthe. It's been wonderful. And uh, make sure you check us out. Pour your poison. Pour your poison.com. We'll be back. <laughs>